Hello, my name is Alexis Luna, and I will be presenting this presentation called Beethoven, Deafness, and How It Can Change You, the Musician, as evidenced by Beethoven's Late Period. And I will be explaining how his Beethoven's deafness had affected the stylistic elements of the Late Period, as evidenced by his Hammerkleber Sonata, and also relate the topic of Beethoven's deafness to modern day issues with learning to cope with physical disabilities as a musician that can affect your own musicality. Through the use of three scholarly articles, I'll relate the information with one another and provide a clear and concise goal on how these physical limitations can be overcome and adapted to in the current day. Beethoven's Late Period marked a drastic turn in Beethoven's overall style due to a number of factors that occurred throughout this transition from his middle period to his late period. So beginning with the end of the Napoleonic Wars, arts funding was being cut in the nation where Beethoven lived in. Not only Beethoven, but many other artists such as painters, composers, performers, they were not getting as much funding as they were before the Napoleonic Wars. And Beethoven, who solely relied on composing to fund himself and also his nephew amidst a custody battle. These stressors contributed to Beethoven's change in style. Beethoven's late period is defined as a quizzical period, since most of his music had drastically different characters and sounds as compared to his previous periods, but they were also the longest and most complex of his compositional works that had resulted from these odd sound experimentations. One such work that shares these elements is the Opus 106 Hammerklavier Sonata, a widely debated sonata that has been researched profusely about involving certain elements such as the debated note of whether or not in measures 224 through 226 if an A or A sharp is inputted by Beethoven in the first movement. Professor of Music Theory Nicholas Marston discusses the mannerisms and character of the Hammerkleber Sonata with a cohesive outlook on the contributions of other scholars who analyze the sonata. Certain elements such as this phrase in the Larg of the fir first movement are described as it follows. Everything. The crescendo to fortissimo. The accelerando to prestissimo. And not least Beethoven's change of mind conspires to reinforce A as a highly privileged pitch in this largo. Moreover, the climactic A major triads being hammered out are now functioning as a dominant of D minor. As there, the music again surrenders the chance to reach D. F pianissimo insinuates itself beneath A almost as an afterthought and spends the next four measures, establishing itself as a rock-solid home dominant in B flat. Remain to be the history of an idea in the Hammerklavier Sonata, 1998. Marston goes into great detail and dies about the certain elements that define Beethoven's late period, such as these weird chords, the voicing and voice leading of his pieces, and punctuous elements of certain quartets, and all of that can be tailed back to a certain other element, another stressor that I haven't mentioned yet, which is Beethoven's deafness. Despite these diverse elements, they all contribute to this overall character of Beethoven's late period, and their existence of quirkiness and uniqueness can also be explained by Beethoven's own deafness. Without the ability to be able to hear his own music at this period in his life, Beethoven was able to be more creative in his process of composing music, possibly forcing these interesting characteristics that define his late period to others as a statement that can say I cannot listen to my own art, so you must do so for me. As stated by physician Stanislaw Bielajewski and Dr. Roman Osowski, as it follows, This composer created immortal music. Despite his illness, he was endowed with both talent and limitation, strength and weakness of character. This had an impact on Beethoven's life and psyche, which in combination with the enormous hearing impairment, a sense so important for a professional musician and composer created an extremely complicated personality. It can be said that Beethoven was a genius, that is, a person with extraordinary creative abilities. They are an empirical indicator of his genius, works that time has verified very positively as immortal. Gushuta Sikika Ludwig van Beethoven 2010. Physical limitations on oneself can induce a heavy toll on one's own mentality and resolve. And you have to ask yourself that despite the limitations and hardships that Beethoven had, why did he keep writing music? Did it have to be out of necessity because that was all he knew what to do at the time? To take care of his nephew amidst a custody battle? Were his late compositions a cry for help to see if he could still be heard despite not being able to hear himself? Beethoven himself states, In suffering, a person must test his strength, must endure everything, disregarding his nothingness and strive for further perfection. 
Beethoven was fully aware of the consequences of his deafness and decided to test the result when faced with certain musical doom of not being able to hear your own music. Professor P. Harrison analyzes the psychological effects of deafness in Beethoven's life and music and describes many possibilities to the overall result of the character of the late period, accrediting it to social isolation from deafness, visual imagery, associating certain chords with colors and Beethoven's use of the E major for his more triumphant pieces, sort of relativity and familiarity between pieces and such, and more intimate relationships between the senses. And due to all these factors, uh, Beethoven probably grew tired of these familiar senses and decided, I will do what no one has done yet. And that, that, how, that is how his late period is defined. It is more of a experimentation period. It is debated about. No one knows exactly what Beethoven was going for, being the creative musician that he was, the, the musical genius, despite being deaf and limit, limited in such a way. He was still able to express his ideas and this sense of desperation to the listener, to us. And relating this to my methodology of how, my, how I came across this information, it was actually very difficult to find substantial information about deafness in music and the effects of it on composers. There's a very limited perception of how not only deafness but other physical limitations such as chronic pain in your hands or the loss of your voice can lead to terrible mental states if not being able to play or listen to your own music. music. Major sources that I use have to be translated from Polish or German because there aren't many sources in English that have explored this issue and it's concerning as a musician here that there isn't any new information being investigated on how to cope with health conditions like Beethoven went through. One can only give you the generic answer like oh seek therapy or give a hearing aid but those can only go so far for Beethoven himself he was able to continue writing music despite not being able to hear anything resulting in one of the most highly sought after music of the time period but for others who may be as unfortunate as Beethoven and share his fate in deafness there's still no good sources on how one can cope with it it's alarming to think that there's a musician out there who won't be able to find information because there is none and a way that we can expound on this issue is to simply start giving more attention to it in the first place it will contribute greatly not only to the overall study of mentality during deafness, but also to other to help other musicians who could be going through this issue in the modern day. It shouldn't be difficult for anyone else to try and look for the answer to the questions that pertain to this issue. If we only give a bit more of attention, of course, we, we pay attention to Beethoven's deafness. That yes, Beethoven was a deaf composer, and that's why he was a genius at composing, but not how his deafness affected his composing in the first place. It's very much looked at only on the surface, but not within how this whole physical limitation affected him, not only musically, but mentally and physically. And with that, I thank you for hearing my presentation of deafness and how it can change a composer's ability to compose and express themselves. Overall, this issue has to be expanded upon and researched more since there isn't enough of it to begin with. And it, it contributes greatly to the overall set of mentality within musicians who suffer through this and how they can be helped to cope with it. And Beethoven, who his, his only way to cope with it was just to keep writing. Others may not be as motivated to write anymore or to compose anymore after going deaf. Like I mentioned before, this has to be a way more researched topic because there aren't many articles, especially in English, that are available to be read upon. And with that, I thank you very much.